All right, this screencast will uh, serve as a sanity check on my uh, calculations and sizing for my uh, my turbo setup on my OM606. Probably going to be pretty dry and boring, but I'm hoping to provide information to somebody else looking to do this or somebody that has done it uh, can correct me where I'm going wrong because buying these turbos and doing the fabrication and all that it's uh, very time consuming and also very expensive so it's nice to know what works and what doesn't and rather than just uh, try a bunch of random things or go with something you read in a forum um, it, it's nice to be a little more methodical about it so my goal is to um, have 650 horsepower at the wheels. Uh, whatever torque comes along with that is fine. Uh, I fully expect it'll be well over 500 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, there are several Hellcats and Z06s in, uh, in my vicinity and uh, I want to smoke them all. So uh, I just think it'd be hilarious to have a little 123 scream by these cars and give them no chance. Uh, I want, also want this thing to spool very fast. Right now the car is quick with just the HX40 running at uh, 40 pounds. It is the HX40 Super. Uh, I want to stress that because it's not an eBay HX40. Um, it, once it, it kicks in, it goes very good, but it uh, is very slow to spool. So I'm hoping that uh, the end result will be a setup that spools much faster. Okay, so I'm in Austin, Texas. We're 489 feet above sea level here. And I did a little bit of research uh, with the National Weather Service. I wanted to find out really um, what to use my calculations um, for atmospheric pressure. And uh, we are right around sea level. So that makes the math a lot easier because I can use all the theoretical constants there. Um, mass flow, there are some assumptions in here. Uh, rule of thumb is about 10 pounds per minute of air for every horsepower for my goal. So if you remember, I'll need 750 engine horsepower. And we'll get into that for a second. So uh, we're going to need 10 pounds per minute of air for every 100 horsepower. Now, um, this is going to vary quite a bit. The, uh, the power loss from the engine to the rear wheels. Um, I just found another rule of thumb on the internet, 15%. I don't know how accurate that is, um, but I had to have something uh, uh, to compensate for that loss. So the tor target horsepower is the uh, wheel horsepower um, times the power loss. Uh, in our case, we get uh, 650. Uh, we need uh, an additional 15% or really 700. Uh, 47 and a half horsepower, we'll call it 750. So that's what the engine needs to put out. So based on uh, 750 horsepower, we need about 75 pounds per minute of air. And uh, another thing with the OM606 right now, I'm not pushing it to its limit. I don't even have a tech in my car right now. I'm guessing that uh, about six grand is going to be the peak. But I'm again, that is a guess. I'm not sure. So I'm not going to dive in and worry about all the absolute theoretical values, uh, temperature and all of that. Um, yes, those things are important, but the end resultant system will not be theoretical, right? Um, like all, all pipe diameters and all that, they're not going to be theoretical um, size. They're going to be whatever the market can bear. Uh, or the closest products that, that meet our needs. So I don't want to sp get analysis paralysis, go through this uh, with a bunch of theoretical values, and then figure out that um, you know we can't even implement that. So we're gonna we're gonna get very close, hopefully, and then we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So currently, again, the uh, HX40 Super, um, it comes from the factory from whole set, preset at 40 psi. So the big question is, if we need 75 pounds a minute of um, flow, will that engine even produce that? So let's take a look here. We have um, naturally aspirated. If there was no turbo on it, uh, how much could we flow? And um, right now, we would flow. It's an 831 cubic inch motor. 
or uh, I'm sorry, 183 cubic inch motor, it takes two revolutions uh, to complete its cycle. So we got half there. I don't know where the 1728 comes from. Uh, these formulas come from a book called Turbo, Real World High Performance Turbocharged Systems. And um, it looks like we'll be pushing 317 CFM. So uh, also in that book, it mentions for 24 valve systems, um, you might want to go with a 85% uh, volumetric efficiency. So that's what I used here. Uh, so that really that is more like a 270 CFI engine or CFM engine. So the pre pressure ratio for 40 pounds is going to be 3.72. And we'll look at a pressure map or a compressor map later and you'll see where this is at. And a density ratio. Um, for You can find charts online or in the book I referenced. Uh, that might go to 3.72 but some of the calculations later um, I was off the chart so I used this handy little calculator um, on not too fast I found several links to it uh, online and uh, it says that we have a density ratio of about 3.21 it has more parameters in it than I'm accounting for um, so uh, I just tried to use realistic values. So now the CFM with the turbo, right, because we're adding the density, uh, is, is um, we're at 59.8 pounds per minute of mass flow. And as we know, if we need 75, then we've uh, we fell a little short. So let's find out what we need. So if we work backwards now and we take that whole fam uh, formula and we combine it, uh, we have our, our, our mass flow here in CFM times our volumetric efficiency, our density ratio, and then we have a, a conversion to pounds per minute, and we know, or pound, yeah, pounds per minute, and we know we need to hit 75. So that puts us at a density ratio of 4.3 that we need. So if we plug those values into that, uh, that calculator that I referenced on not too fast, all right, because this is off the chart on, on most of the density ratio charts I found, then uh, we need about 57 psi. Okay, so 14 uh, or 4.8. So I have an HX40 Super. It's a green one. 4.8 is uh, pretty much off the chart. So whole set uh, does make some claims and and some comments uh, on the product page that isn't reflected in their compressor map. Um, so if we come up 75 here, uh, you know, at 48, we would be on the outer boundary here of this map anyways. So what about the, uh, the Pro 52? And that's what I was thinking of using, right? So the purple is a standard HX40, not the Super. The Super comes out a little bit more. But you can see now the mass flow puts us right in the middle of the chart, and that's great. However, uh, 4.8 is still a stretch. Now the uh, the website says it's capable of five. Oops, it's capable of five, and it'll put out 75 pounds of boost. That's wonderful, uh, but we're still pushing the limits of the pressure ratio on this turbo. So one way around that is looking at compound turbos. Now, just like with the single turbo setup, there's uh, some assumptions and some other garbage I'll go through here real fast. Uh, high pressure turbo is a little one. That's the one coming right off the exhaust manifold. And um, I'll show you what I, or tell you what I selected for that in a moment. Uh, that is uh, an absolute pressure because it's being fed air that's already been compressed by the low pressure turbo, which is the big one, right? So uh, starting at the exhaust side, the exhaust goes into the high pressure turbo, out the high pressure into the low pressure and then out the exhaust. That low pressure turbo takes air from the atmosphere, it'll compress it, and then that compressed air is fed back into the high pressure turbo, which goes into the intercooler. So there's a difference in, um, in the types of pressure there. So I'm going to have a wastegate on both of these to try to maximize the, the exhaust flow out of the high pressure turbo because I don't want to create um, 
a restriction there. So, so I want the waste gate to open as soon as I can get that big turbo spooled. Um, also, I want to protect the system. So on the big turbo, I want the waste gate to open when the intake has the desired amount of pressure. So I'll, I'll switch the, uh, the waste gates. So the little high pressure turbo will look at the, um, the pressure for on the big turbo and the big turbo will look at the pressure on the intake. Okay, so pressure ratios, everything I, I've read, they're multiplied, they're not additive. So that, uh, that's great. That means that now on the compressor maps, it brings that pressure ratio down. So now we can get in the middle of the maps. So I'm going to try to, to use the, uh, the low pressure turbo and, and size the system as much as I can based on it. I want it to do the majority of the work because I'll, and ultimately it's controlling the boost. It's using its wastegate based on the overall system. My biggest issue has been how to size that high pressure turbo. And again, relying on online forums and things, it looks like 50 to 60% of the mass flow of the big turbo is usually a good rule of thumb. So if we're aiming for 75, we're, we're gonna aim at, or we're gonna look at a, a smaller turbo around 38 pounds a minute or 0.28 kilograms a second. For that for a mass flow rate on the high pressure turbo so i'd like to stick with the same brands so if i'm looking at whole set now and i want 0.28 if that puts us right around in here so if i ever want more mass flow then um, i don't want to be on the the boundaries of this uh, whole set 25 or on the 30 and if we look at this 35 here and this line would come down then um, I think the thir 35 gives us the best range for that high pressure turbo so if we're looking at the HX 30 if we're looking at a 35 there's two flavors there's an HX and an HY the HY has a 9 millimeter or 9 centimeter turbine and um, the housing and that's that would allow it to spool super quick but my concern there is it's it's smaller so i don't know if it's going to cause a restriction um, and really limit the top end because you know the big turbo won't be getting uh, the same flow uh, that it would with the larger one so i really think the hx35 is the safest bet uh, it has a 12 uh, centimeter and, and i I can't remember what the HX Super 40 has. I think it's uh, 16. So baby steps, how am I going to uh, to do this? Well, I gotta fabricate or have a, a, a header fabricated. It'll be a log style header on Facebook. I've already posted the, you know, the somewhat theoretical dimensions that that needs to be so that um, flow is not uh, restricted. I'm gonna have that go to the HX35 and I'm gonna set the, uh, the waste gate to an absolute PR of 2.0. So let's go back and um, let, let's see what that, that looks like. So 2.0, we're right in here. All right, if we're flowing 0.28, then that puts us in, at a nice efficiency. Uh, in fact, that's probably the island we're looking for. Okay, next it's gonna come out of the HX35 into my uh, 40 Super. Uh, that one is taking the out, outside air. We're going to be running um, a PR of 3.72, which is a current 40 pounds. But I'm going to set the waste gate to 45. Um, so if we if we multiply these, in theory, we are already at the uh, the pressure or ratio we need, or um, the boost we need, right? We needed 57. Uh, however, um, I don't want to blow up my engine, so the wastegate is going to let uh, a lot of a lot of that out. So I guess these are kind of conflicting. In theory, it's not going to be 3.72. It'll be uh, 45. All right, um, <clears throat> then I want to dyno the car. I'm going to see where we're at, and then uh, at some point I want to tear down, I want to paint, um, I want to 
rebuild the motor. I want to get decent rods in it. Um, pin the cam bearing or uh, the cam gears, springs, guides, all that stuff. Then we'll bump up that pressure. And I want to dyno it again. And we might have to go with a bigger turbo, like a, a 52 Pro is what I, I keep coming back to, to get the flow I want. So let's go look at the, uh, the compressor map for the 40 again. So here's the 40, 75, somewhere in here. So even at uh, 3.7, I mean, we're, we're still well within the map. I might not need to go to a Pro 52. So we'll, we'll just have to see uh, what it looks like on the dyno, make sure the engine holds up, and um, we'll take it from there.